Right, welcome back to another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic where we solve and fix your bike problems in a virtual way. So if you've got one, make sure you leave it for me down there in the comment section below or on all forms of social media using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Right, let's crack on as ever with the first question this week and it comes in from Vishwar Dev who has converted their time trial bike to a one by drive train using a narrow wide chain ring. Uh, now, Vishwa says that when they have a kind of rubbing kind of noise when the chain is on the last three cogs, so the 11, the 12, and the 13, and but, but it becomes really smooth and silent when the chain is in between the fifth and the eighth rockets. Any reason why this is happening? Should I be concerned about anything, or is it just the sound of possible slight cross-chaining? Right. Okay, it could well be Vishwa, because you're using a narrow wide chain ring, uh, obviously you do have some wider teeth on there, which means that the chain doesn't have the option or ability to move just a fraction of a millimeter, so the chain can just flex slightly and get a better running chain line, which you've already mentioned. So, if you're really keen to still use quite a big gear, so 54, 11, 12 or 13 is pretty big, consider getting an even bigger chain ring and then you can still use the sprockets in the fifth to eighth position so you get that perfectly straight chain line. Something else to consider, you may well be able to get some spacers on the actual spider and push the chain ring out or inwards slightly so you get a better running chain line. Uh, but that's quite drastic and it could well affect actual drivetrain performance there too in terms of uh, power efficiency. But I reckon it's probably because of that narrow wide chain ring, you're just getting increased friction like you've already said. Okay, next up is Henry Kenaway who says, love the show, I have an 11 speed Campagnolo Potenza group set and I would like to install Campagnolo Chorus carbon shifters for the added ability to shift down more than one sprocket per shift. Would these components be compatible? Henry, good to hear from you. I've not actually tried this myself, so I can't give you a real life example, but the official line from Campagnolo is that it won't. Uh, they do actually list that on the help section of their own website. The reason being, I imagine it's something to do with the actual spring return mechanism inside of the rear derailleur and it's just not compatible with the power shift function within the ergo power levers. Um, now, the reason your shifters don't actually allow that shifting mode that you desire is because the shifting, uh, or rather the shift hood style, replicates more of the EPS shape rather than the traditional ergo power one. So it's probably slightly more comfortable, in my opinion anyway, from using the two different types. And the actual shape and uh, way it's been molded just doesn't allow the ratchets to work in such a way. So I'm afraid if you want those extra shifts, you are gonna have to change the rear derailleur as well. Okay, Joe Pavlik is next, or the Joe Pavlik even. Uh, speaking of jockey wheels, when do you know it is time to replace them and how? Right then, Joe. Uh, well, firstly, if the teeth on them are really sharp and look like shark's teeth, then it's definitely time to replace them. Also, if the bearings or bushes within them are really stiff, so the easiest way of finding that out is to try and take the chain away from them slightly and try and turn them. If they're really difficult to turn, they definitely need replacing. Bushes, you can revitalize and get them running good again. If they're ones with sealed bearings though, to be honest, it's not worth the hassle or the time to actually bother trying to revitalize them because they're relatively low cost and well, consumable, I guess. Now, do consider though, if they are moving around, the upper pulley wheel on virtually all systems is designed to have a little bit of float there because that takes up any differences in tolerances in indexing, so between the actual chain line and the indexing of the rear derailleur. Uh, the bottom one though, generally they are in a fixed position and don't have very much flex at all. But if they're really, really flexy and sloppy, definitely replace them. And if the teeth are, well, jagged like shark teeth, replace them too. Right, next up is Jose Mangini, who says, can I use Campagnolo wheels and cassette with the remaining parts being Shimano? Everything 11 speed. I used this combination 20 years ago with nine speed and they worked fine. If not, any suggestion on how to make Italians and Japanese speak the same language? Thanks and keep up the wonderful job. Jose, yes, all 11 speed cassettes work fine across all 11 speed group sets from my experience. It's not 110% perfect, but well, it's 100% perfect. I've never had any problems there, so it's gonna to be totally fine. Yet the manufacturers will say it won't work, but it will. Uh, now, the reason being, the actual sprocket spacings, Shimano and SRAM is identical and the distance or difference in distance between Shimano and Campagnolo or SRAM and Campagnolo is just 0.1 of a millimeter. 
pretty minute. Uh, and the actual thickness of the sprockets is the same across all. So it's gonna work absolutely fine. Italians and Japanese, they speak the same language for what you need to do. Okay, next up, Kevin Aguila, who says, great content as always. You're welcome. Uh, how do you plug the holes in a carbon frame where mechanical groups at cables enter when you switch to DI2? Right, Kevin, a uh, few options here. Easiest one, get some electrical tape and just go over them. It's not that elegant though. Alternatively, contact the frame manufacturer and ask them for some rubber bungs to go in there. They normally have some specialist ones. Uh, also, Shimano, they've got a DI2 grommet set that you could pop in there. Something a bit more, well, hack or bodge if you like, is to get some sous grues. That's like a moldable type material you put in there and that will block it off. You can smooth it off nicely. Or alternatively, some silicone sealant. So the sort of thing you might use in a bathroom or a kitchen, around a sink or some windows, that kind of thing. You can put a dab of that in there and smooth it off nicely and it's easy to pick out if ever you go back to mechanical, but I don't reckon you will. Right, next up, RR8299. That is a very weird name. Would like to see your birth certificate. Actually, I would send it in. Right, anyway, RR8299 says, when I'm not pedaling, the chain suddenly taps the frame and even falls off the big chain ring. If I pedal backwards, it falls off for sure. It's as though it gets caught or stuck in the cassette. DI2 Ultegra on a giant advanced Defy. Right then, RR8299. This sounds to me like your free hub body is jammed up. So the actual pulls or the ratchets within the free hub body and where it joins onto the hub shell, they've got too much grease in there or for some reason the little springs or clips they're not releasing and it's making your bike well almost like a fixed wheel so as you're trying to free wheel it's not allowing it and therefore it's trying to kick you forward and that's what the slamming is likewise when you're trying to pedal it backwards it's not doing so and it's just dislodging from the chain ring so if you're a competent mechanic take apart the free hub clean up the all the grease and the gunk inside of it take out the pulls and the springs make sure they're sparkling and then apply a very small amount of quite thin grease in there before reassembling and it'll be okay otherwise take it down to your local shop and tell them that's what johnny tech has recommended right next one is jem laxon who says hi john is there a way to have a 10 tooth sprocket on the current 11 speed group sets uh, no, not that I know of. I know years ago there was a 10 tooth sprocket or even a 9 tooth perhaps that threaded into where your lock ring would go and acted as a both a lock ring as well as a sprocket. I think it was for mounted downhill mountain bikes or something, but then you had to change the axle and do all sorts of jiggery pokery. Likewise, I think Moulton, the fold up bikes that are pretty bling from Bradford on Avon, not that far away from here, they also had a 9 tooth sprocket as well. But that was a specialist bit of kit. Uh, and Shimano, pretty sure they've got a group set, or they certainly did, called Caprio or something like that, that was designed for fold-up bikes. And the free hub body was normal width, but sort of the last third of it was really, really small, so you could put a smaller sprocket on there. Of course, you've got a smaller size wheel, so having a smaller sprocket means you can get a bigger uh, amount of wheel revolutions per turn of the crank and everything. But yeah, what you're searching for isn't available to my knowledge. I'm sure someone out there has probably hacked or bodged one, but certainly as an aftermarket uh, component, no, it's not possible. Final one, Tim Hughes. Now, Tim says, I have a question. Is it possible to attach a front derailleur to a frame that previously did not have one? I've seen band on adapters. Is that all I would need? I'm in the process of attempting to convert a cheap Chinese bicycle into a modern day road bike with a 105 group set. Tim, yes, sir. A uh, front band on adapter is all you need really to actually put that front derailleur on. What you need to consider though, is that you've got a adequate frame to actually allow the routing of a front derailleur cable there too. Now, if you've got a under the bottom bracket shell uh, cable guide, then make sure it's got two, uh, two slots basically for your cables. If not, you can probably buy one that will bolt on there or screw in there, absolutely fine, you'll be able to use that. But you do need to make sure obviously you've got a cable stop at the front of the bike to allow the outer cable to stop in order to get tension on the front derailleur cable running backwards. Uh, likewise, if you don't have a uh, cable guide underneath there, then maybe you've got one on the seat tube, like a cyclocross bike or old school mountain bike, and you can run it into there and do some 
uh, magic with that too. But those are things you need to consider. You need to have a cable stop in order to allow the cable to have some tension before fitting that front derailleur. But I'm interested to see this. I do like a sort of a cheap bicycle conversion, so make sure you send some pictures of it in to me. Right, there we are. I hope I've been able to help answer and solve your bike problem. If not, make sure you leave it down there in the comment section below or on all forms of social media using that hashtag AskGCNTech. Right, remember to like and share these videos with your buddies and friends out there. And also, why not check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Now, for two more great videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here.